Welcome to Tech at Lunch, the podcast that satisfies your hunger for all things tech while you enjoy your midday meal. So grab your sandwich, tune in, and let's dig in. Hello, I'm Nick. Hey, I'm John. And, you know, this week we don't have Ed with us. Um, you know, he's got some stuff going on and said he wasn't feeling so hot. So, you know, we'll get we'll get his opinion uh, next week. No, you yeah, know, he definitely has one. I tell you. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> that that is that is that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, last week we kind of went into the extruders and we talked about the um you know, the basic consumables um and also sustainability of those consumables. Um, so this week we're going to get into your basic filaments um for your consumables and like the recycling and sustainability inside of the house for those. Um, when we talk about basic filaments, it's something that you don't need a specialty hot end to run. It's not an engineering filament. You know, we're not saying you need to go out and buy, you know, a thousand dollar printer. We know that your $600 printers can run engineering filaments. We understand that. That does not mean that that is considered a basic filament if you started out running nylon we got another question for you (laughs) yeah why are you doing that (laughs) why are you going straight to the industrial version first you got you're a madman (laughs) exactly i mean to be honest like you've got to start somewhere i think we mentioned the like how to start printing and and their basics and things like that in, in a previous episode but yeah, you should you should kind of know what you're working with if you're gonna, you know, uh, make any ki- type of chemical reaction and, you know, heating something can cause a chemical reaction. So like y- if you're not aware of what chemicals that you're heating, um, I I would say that you should not be a scientist uh, until you do that research. <laughs> uh, exactly. You got to do your basic steps of research, like MSDS forms and all that stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you though, with a lot of these basic ones we talk about, um, I think in my eyes, I mean, uh, correct me if you think it differently, but PLA, um, PETG, and ABS. That's Maybe I, ASA, but most likely ABS. I, yeah, I would definitely think that. Um... I'm not going to yeah. throw, you know, TPU or anything like that into the the beginner filaments. You know, like you said, it's PLA, yeah. PETG, and ABS. Those are the ones that you can print on any printer. Um, yeah. Just, you know, might need an enclosure for one of them. Um, or you can run without it. You know, be a wild man. No, you can absolutely run it without it. You're, you're just going to have to. You can't make a big print. <laughs> right. And like you said, find the MD, MSDSs. You know, look those things up. Have a hold of them. Take a look at them. Um, you know, it'll save you in the long run. Um, hundred percent. Now they have other specialty beginner filaments that are, you know, recycled materials and, you know, stuff like that. That's also where you start running into, and this is, I, I think a point of contention, uh, contention on, on some of these things is what the role is made out of. Mm. You can get the refill rule role. Sorry. Um, or the, pla- the, the plastic spool or the cardboard spool. If mm-hmm. you know, you're it, and the thing is, so you pretty much work for your, your sustainability, working your way out. Yeah. I mean, it also, it depends on the brand because I think previously, I mean, I buy a lot of overture filament. Um, they're very consistent. I would say like I can keep my settings the same on my printer. So I, for a long time would buy PETG in, in black, blue, um, clear even overture filament. Um, and I could keep my settings the same. So there's a consistency there. Um, so yeah, it, it really depends on, um, kind of that chemical makeup too. And, and it, yes, it can fit on all your printers, but they still, I, I mean, I would say you have like little kinks and little, um, slight differences like I can't run the same temperature for let's say uh, a brand like 3D Solutech no matter what color um, versus uh, Overture P- uh, PLA same same filament just different um, brands you know yeah so, like I run Sun Lu hmm. so that's what I find runs best through most of my stuff except for my ABS my ABS I'm running the 
a, a couple older rolls of the Creality um, black ABS that they don't make anymore. Um, oh, they don't make that anymore? I have not seen it in a very long time. Um, oh, I've, I still have a roll or two, actually, so that's crazy. I just, you know, haven't gotten to using it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't found it in a, in a good minute, and I've looked for it because it printed ABS really well on the Voron. But I haven't really seen much of it. And the thing is, is it's tightly wound. It's great. Um, you know, it's not as shiny as others. Um, it can be, but it's not. Um, it's, I, I, you know, for me, it, it's the look of, like, Sun Lu stuff is the reason why I get it. And it runs great on either the Voron or on the, um, um, the Ender, depending on, you know, where I want to throw it that day. Yeah, very consistent, right? Consistent. Right. I mean, you you've tried Solutech as well, 3D mm -hmm. Solutech. That was one that kind of a lot of people uh, I hear swear by. So oh, yeah. that's it's Amer American made, so that's honestly why a lot of people it, it since it's American made, it's a little bit easier on the shipping costs and stuff like that as well cuz it's a little closer, but I bet you you can get Esun or or Sunlu or or some some of those uh brands, uh Chinese more more like brands um if you're, you know, in in, in Asia or, or or in Europe, you could probably get those a little quicker. But yeah. T to be honest with you at the end of the day, it's about consistency. Right. right. So, I mean, but all of these filaments, like, I've I've looked at several MSDSs. Um, I think, like, my first thing I go to whenever I'm thinking about, like, you're probably just starting printing, right? If you're using these, mo like, or just learning about these filaments or just using them for the first time. The first thing I would say is safety. So look at your, look at your temperatures that you're heating everything to and kind of be mindful to that. And... And yeah, MSDS. If if you if you're not reading that, and if you're not prepping the area, like of course this the the common things like don't put it in your eyes. Like <laughs> I feel like honestly should be common sense, but it's it's definitely on that MSDS. So it, it tells you what yeah, to don't do. Don't eat it. Don't eat it, please. Um, honestly, that we're getting to a place like it. It is a good question to ask if you can eat off of it because we we talk about you know, plastic and, and disposable, you know, silverware, pa paper plates, stuff like that. Uh, but but the silverware is always plastic. Why is that able to be used and eaten off of? But th that stuff can be sanitized. Also, it's probably created at such a high temperature in a sanitized area so that you don't have to worry about it. Your 3D printer in your room is not sanitary. No, I think the only one, get, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that could be considered, say, um food safe at this point is pet g because i've heard pet g is actually used 95 percent of the time when people are making like bowls and stuff like that off their printers that they can actually use because they can treat them since it is a glycol yeah. i was gonna say the the treatment is the is the key thing with pla it it is biodegradable so like it, it will react to anything that is more solventy um, and alcohol based, right? So it'll break down quicker and be a little bit more um, f brittle. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, Pet G seems to me, uh, or, and is in my opinion, kind of my main go to everyday filament to print with. Um, I tend to use ABS if I want something to be, you know, temperature resistant, at least to an extent. I can mm -hmm. leave it outside maybe where it doesn't degrade in the sun um but all of these things like i like there's a so, there's a, a process called vapor smoothing um for where you can take acet acetone and just a like a a bottle's cap worth and put it in um let's say what was it he said put a paper towel down wet it with a little bit of the acetone and then put it over top of the cap and then put the print on top of it and, and close that and give it 20 minutes. It's going to take away or give it a few hours maybe depending on size of the print, right? Um, it's going to clear off those ridges of your print, the layer lines that you see on the side to make it look more of a professional finish. So like still you can use with household products. I mean, you have nail polish, right? Uh, I mean, most people have nail polish. I don't know if you have nail polish, Nick. <laughs> No, I just have regular acetone. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, but you, I just have a, a tube of acetone just sitting there. I kind of got from um, um, Home D or Lowe's, I meant. 
so yeah, nothing nothing crazy. So I, I mean, most people have it in their home already, and you can you can do some vapor smoothing. So like, if you're curious, you should look that up. However, ABS I would say shouldn't be your first print uh, oh, no. filament. Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll be. I don't think you'll you know find it particularly difficult, but I think that you will struggle a lot longer if you don't use PLA or PET G. Yeah, I started um, with PET G. Yeah. Yeah. See, but, you went straight. You went straight to. But it, but to be honest with you, it took you took to it. It's it's very similar to the process of PLA. I don't see why not. Why it wouldn't be a good stop and starting point. Yeah, and you know I tried that Geechee, um, uh, Pet G. That you know it wasn't that bad. I still buy it. You know to this day, it still works. Didn't you buy the? They had they had print beds too available, didn't they? Yep, I bought. I have two of those. I think. Yeah. I see. Um. Well, so, we can get to those two, or we already talked about print beds, I think, huh? Yeah, and the thing uh, is, is remember, your print beds are dependent upon whatever you're printing. So, yeah. you know, if that leads us into the whole PET-G problem, is PET-G has this inherent ability to become concrete. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, yeah. With it whatever... With the bed. <laughs> right, whatever you print to. So you have to use a spring bed. You have to use a PEI sheet. You have to use the non-smooth side because if you use the smooth side, your print bed and your pet G print are now the same. <laughs> you ain't getting that back. No, nah, I've had that happen to me a couple of times. I printed on the the uh, and this guy kind of shows that you know anybody can do this. Is he, yeah, I printed on the um uh, what was the metal spring sheet they give you from Creality, and I ripped the coating off of it. <laughs> Oh, they laugh because I can't tell you how many print beds I have uh, in the box that have the, I do a skirt, like a little outline around my print before the brim or, or the print itself if I don't use a brim. Mm -hmm. um, and I have started a print, walked away, come back, and an entire the entire like path was etched out. Uh, so nozzle done print bed done <laughs> so i've got that on my uh on my on my voron i got a little yeah. ring around it a little scary but, a little sad because you know you have to replace that now yeah i'll replace it eventually it's fine for what it does but mm -hmm. you know the thing is is you know and that's another thing it's to like, keep your print beds because the thing is especially and this is why you buy double-sided print beds because you can just flip them over um and if you keep them if you destroy a rough side on one and a, and a smooth side on the other Guess what? Now you have a smooth side and you're going to just flip them, switch them. You know, when you're cleaning yeah. one, switch out to another one. You know, yeah. great way to hold those. You're... I think that it's a good good, a good practice to keep two print beds. Yeah. Because you, know I mean? you could always, like, let one cool and it'll pop off on its own. It's like it's like PLA, for example. PLA doesn't require any specialty bed. Technically, you can write it on a non-heated surface mm -hmm. um, and it would work fine. Um, I haven't really tried that, though, but I might... <laughs> um, don't they say that you, know, you don't have to have a heated bed for for pet G to work for PLA to work. So, you know, I don't know. I I guarantee well, you that you know, um, with, you know the guys that were printing at Rapid, you know, with Hades temperatures of you know PLA, you know, they didn't have to worry about a uh, you know a heated print bed because they were printing on you know a four by eight sheet of plywood. Oh, they were printing with uh, <laughs> yeah, they were printing on plywood and printing with pellets. See, here's the thing and that carpet. I was going to actually. Uh, <laughs> I was going to raise the point to next is like, yeah, we talk about basic filaments, but I can't, I can't ignore the, the, um, additive, uh, or the, the additional like, um, uh, elements or minerals or whatever you want to call it that, that a lot of uh, brands will add to the pet G or PLA to make it a quote unquote PLA plus or pet G plus, um, to be honest with you, I think that like you'll see that very often, um, and it's an effort to create more durability or more um, uh, rigid, depending on what the circumstances. Maybe you can make it magnetic because you're adding some some type of magnetic uh, like iron oxide. Yeah, like oxide or, or something around those lines, titanium or um, anything like that. So so there are ways that companies have kind of gotten around the the fact that some of these filaments are, of course, um, less, uh, how should I say, durable, I guess. They, their, their lifetime is a little bit shorter because they don't have as much of a, um, 
um, uh, structure, I guess, like depending on how much you infill your prints. Uh, but whenever you get to the macro size and things like that, it definitely becomes less important what you're printing on. Uh, definitely is very important to have your print to be like, like in the case that we saw, like these guys were printing deck deck chairs. Um, they got to be durable enough to carry a, like so much weight as well as to be able to be left outside. So they've got to have some type of additive, uh, chemical or, or type of oxide in there that'll help, um, you know, keep it, uh, keep it from decomposing in the sun. Yeah, you know, and the thing is, is also when you talk start talking about additives, it's also make sure that when you're working with your your filaments, and you start talking about stuff that glows in the dark. Um, glow in the dark filaments are I don't I'm not sure if all filaments do this, but most things that glow in the dark, trinium, if you are a two A uh, um, uh, fan, is technically radioactive, um, and um, if you are a fan of, if you are a, you know, a two A advocate, and you do enjoy uh, the uh, ACOG, the trinium side on top of the ACOG is radioactive. Let's have a radioactive isotope in it. Um, it's not a lot. It's the same thing that's in your technically that's in your um, uh, um, smoke detectors. Um, and industrial smoke detectors is considered radioactive. I didn't know so, that. So. Most stuff that glows is, well, it has a radioactive isotope to it. Um, it's not a lot. It's not enough to kill you. But it, just the one thing is, you just know it's there. I was going to say, it can't be enough to kill you because they've been using it for so long, right? So. Right. Wow. I mean, a little bit of radiation never never hurt, right? <laughs> no, I don't want any radiation, though. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I have some of those prints though. Like they are, they're safe to the touch. They charge with the, the UV or the light that gets, you know, um, exposed to them. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would, again, I feel like I, I have to say it again is don't eat it. Don't rub it in your eyes. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, burn it or be in, don't burn it and inhale any of those fumes from the burning. These are all bad. Uh, honestly, it's a lot of carbon monoxide, which is the, um, uh, which is not something that your lungs would do well with. So, um, those are kind of the main things and seek, seek some medical attention if, if any of that happens. So, but to be honest with you, uh, that, that raises the question I would, I would have for you, Nick, is if, let's say you were to make something that was impact resistant, um, would you choose like ABS, um, PLA plus, PET G plus, or uh, what, what are you thinking if you have to make something that's maybe, let's say not industrial, but still has to take a little bit of impact. Maybe like it's a, a clip for a handle or something. It's not taking the main impact, but it's got to at least transfer, right? Uh, what, what, what are you making that out of? Oh boy! Oh, and one thing to go back to the radioactive topic, they stop. They really they some companies have pulled back from having to from using it, and it you know so now it's actually just a um uh, a chemical that they utilize. Um, but okay, the sense. thing is, but some of them still some of your older stuff is. Um, for that, ooh, that's hard because the thing is, is then I'd have to ask, is it is it exposed to UV light? Right. Because. Yeah, I think... If it's not exposed to UV light, then, you know, for me, it's, it's pet G all day long, um, or a high fill PLA. If it's something that has to be exposed to UV light, that has to be able to withstand outdoor temperatures throughout the, you know, the, the season change, it's going to be ABS. Okay. Just because of that, you know, unknown factor of UV, you know, yeah. So it's like you really can't pick one. Um, I'd say if I had, you know, if it was one where it could go either way, it would definitely be ABS. Um, mm. because ABS is, you know, to be able to handle that, you know, craziness, right. the outdoor craziness. Well, it's like it's it's you know always like twelve plus hours of direct sunlight sometimes for depending on where you put things. So that makes sense. Uh, I'm keep that question in mind because as we kind of go through what what filaments, resins, whatever consumable we're kind of going through. I know we're starting with basic, but when we go to advanced, 
I'm gonna ask you the same question <laughs> and see see what you think too, because I think that my question my answer is the same as yours here. Um, the ABS just makes sense, and anything that you know has to heat transfer or, or dissipate any heat, uh, ABS even like it's it's just it, the um, we didn't talk about it much, but there's there's terms like glass transition temperature. There's terms like uh, um, uh, boiling point, melting point, stuff like that. So you're hitting the melting point without going too far, so that you can melt the filament to 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 get it to a uh, and the bed temp at to a certain point where you can hit a glass transition. Um, um, you know, so that that material looks more glass-like. Um, than, than, you know, a, a spool or, or like a cord or bead wire, whatever you want to call it. So there's a lot of things that, like, you have to consider whenever you're t you're talking about making something. So if it's like, if it's like let's say, uh, a mount for, like, a, a MCU or a mount for, like, a Raspberry Pi or something you're putting somewhere, dude, if it's, that's, it, that's the only question you have to answer. Is it going to go outside? How hot is it going to get where this lives? Um, and, and that'll tell you what, what filament you need to use. So no. I think it's that simple. And, you know, and some people, you know, will it see impact? You know, that's, oh, that's true. That's, true. That, that, that's, I think another open question. Like if you're making like a door latch or, you know, something like that, you know, you're definitely going to be looking more or less into your, you know, your higher level, you know, ABSs and stuff like that. However, the big thing to remember is also, if you start dealing, like people will look at this and say, because this is, you know, kind of an ongoing question is a infilled um a filament still considered a basic filament so is a carbon fiber pla or uh, considered a, a basic filament um you know i think that's you know it's kind of something that people think and probably could ask you know is is that kind of what we're dealing with when when you're talking about you know basic filaments is or are we going to would that be something that we would save for your advanced because it's technically still pla yeah i mean that's that's true i think that that was that's something that i want to get to because um i would say that that could also be like it could just say goodbye to your special. novel <laughs> yeah honestly that that was the piece i was going to get to because they become when you start adding so many things they become um uh, there's more friction at your nozzle, so they become abrasive, and and make it make it much more difficult to maintain that unless you get a hardened steel. So, like this is where this is where the consumables kind of it gets into. I, I don't want to say a gray area, but it's it's like a you need to upgrade this to do that. So like in my eyes, I would say it becomes advanced because you probably need to upgrade your nozzle or maybe even your hot end to run some of the ones that have. Uh, certain filaments in there so i know that my my brother had carbon fiber infused pet g and it ruined his nozzle however the the hot end did fine so i think that it you if things that you should consider um i think that it won't be difficult to to use because you're using the same process however uh it's it's kind of um i wouldn't say dangerous but it's a little bit risky because now that if you have a failed print you have to replace your nozzle and it makes that failed print kind of a little bit more expensive right so uh, yeah, it's, but it gets I a think gray that area the, yeah i think that the risks outweigh the the cons though because like uh are not outweigh the con the benefits outweigh the uh the risks uh because at the end of the day the carbon fiber i can contest i can 100 percent agree is more durable in the end end print impact resistant you can you can um i was drilling i used it as like shelf brackets to support like a full printer in my i, I built the lack enclosure and it's supporting a full printer those my enclosure uh risers are all are almost all carbon fiber pet g so it's it's something that like i've I've broken more pet G uh, prints than I've used, than those things have uh, seen printed on them. So it's it's crazy. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it makes it more durable, but it does it costs more. Like I, right. I think the cost is the biggest change. Uh, but it can be it can be used easily. I would say maybe not advanced, but intermediate. Yeah, that I, I can agree with that. Yeah. And you know, the big thing is is also when people are thinking about you know, filaments. And this goes back to the rolls question where the rolls design is, you know, if you're going to, 
if you want to be one of those people that, you know, which we don't mind, that, oh, I want to be able to recycle everything. So I'm going to only print PLA and I'm only going to buy cardboard spools. Um, there you, th you can do that and it's possible. Mm -hmm. Some um, guys only do cardboard spools. Though. Right. But now what you need to remember to print is the ring that goes around the cardboard. Because the cardboard won't doesn't really roll too well to what I've seen, um, and and red on like bearings and stuff like that. You know, on the um, the filament rolls rollers, mm -hmm. it doesn't really roll that well. So that's why people put on the outside of the rings. They put the clamps on the outside. Also, if you're going to run a MCU of any sort, not MCU, but MMU of any sort, um, they say if you're going to run, um. What is it? Oh, uh, crap. They're just more dur more susceptible to, like, damage so that it's not flat anymore. It'll get stuck yeah. if anything kinks. Yeah, I, I can see that because I've seen my, my filament get pulled off of it, the roller because it was stuck. It, it kind of stuck, uh, got a, a bearing. It wasn't rolling and then pulled it off of the, the whole, um, the whole, like, setup there. So... I, I can attest that I've seen that happen and fail to print for me. So and you know the well the thing is is like for example you get these these printers that have the the MMUs built into them um, or on them um, and stuff like that some of the some of the ones that we like to talk about um, they um, will tell you that you need to have these rings on them to be able to use them inside their their MMU system um, I don't know why I'm having a, why I'm blanking out on a printer name right now. The MMU, the um, we were just talking about talking about bamboo. Yeah, bamboo labs. Yeah, the bamboo labs one has to be um, wrapped in plastic, the edges, or it won't roll right. See, and that makes sense. I mean, honestly, on the bamboo, it, it's got a it's got a special roller too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. But then you can um, also buy the ones that you can just open them up and close them, and open them up and close them, and you're just buying refill packs. You know, there's yeah. that too, and you don't have to buy yeah, that. Yeah, the Sandu makes a, a master spool. The one thing I can say, I've tried this master spool. The one thing I'll say to do is, when you're putting a new roll on there, oh my God, dear God, make sure it clips. <laughs> when you when you put it back in, if it doesn't click into place <laughs> the, all the way, uh, halfway through your your print, it'll open up and fall to the ground and is now a spaghetti monster before it gets through the <laughs> the extruder. Ew. Yeah, so that's the filament that I, I cut, I threw in the bin, and I was like, I'm not going to touch that unless it is dire circumstances, <laughs> like I don't have anything else. Just and it's uh, it sat there for so long in the de next to the desiccant that my brother said, hey, I need some, can I borrow this? And I just, I was like, yeah, if you're going to untangle it, you, you can take it for free. I don't want any money for it. <laughs> <laughs> Get it out of my eye, uh, eyesight. So, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, that's, it, it, it is smart though. Uh, it, it was a nice way to kind of do things. I think it's a, an innovative idea. Um, uh, I think I want to kind of touch on the sustainability piece that you just mm -hmm. mentioned. I mean, this is a piece that we're already kind of harping on with the cardboard um, spools, but you're talking about keep the keep the filament and and possibly use it for something else. Maybe make the spools yourself. Um, I think yeah, reusing your filament is is almost to me if you want to be sustainable, it's necessary, right? So if you have a, a print that I'm like, if you're mass printing PLA, um, then y your failed prints, you can probably grind up and, and melt down and respool. Um, it's, it's something that like, um, I'm, I'm planning to do. I've saved every bit of mine. I'm definitely squarely on that side of, of saving the, the filaments. I have plastic bags. I toss them in the bags. I write a little note on it. The brand, the um, the the ag what the filament is, I toss it in there, tie the bag closed, and I throw it in a box of, uh, of a, a bunch of them. So I've got to probably um, – I've probably got, if I had to add it up, five to ten pounds of, of failed prints that I have to respool or melt down and respool. And I plan on doing that just to be just to be, you know, sustainable in my own right. Like I don't want to throw away and, and make that kind of degrade um, in a landfill or anything like that. I know the PLA is biodegradable so I can kinda of, that's that's not that big a deal. But pet pet G mm -hmm. it's a bit bigger deal. So I wanna I wanna reuse that. You like know, a filler type of system. 
Yeah, exactly. And you can grind it into pellets, and you can kind of get some type of a pellet system if you wanted to as well, and and get it to go that way. So that, that's something I plan on doing. That's something that like I'm not saying is necessary. Um, oh yeah. But I can agree with you. There's also some like there's websites. There's there's um, services I should say that that are available where you can send your filament in just like how I have it packaged. Maybe do it better than plastic bags you put them in ziploc bags or something like that more secure um and you can send it in and they'll they'll you know melt it down and spool it up for you and send yeah. it back to you or they'll However, send you a, a roll from somebody something else they've done yeah and exactly then use theirs for something else yeah uh, exactly so it's it's something that's it's a cool idea and and it helps out with the sustainability sustainability of everything we talk about maybe complain oh, yeah. about microplastics everywhere it's kind of scary to talk about creating more plastics right um so anything that you can do to help with that footprint that that um you know you may have to throw away any plastics it's 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 helpful if you can if you don't right and there is a, a hardware set out there called philistruder <clears throat> philistruder has the ability to you know respool um filament you can throw it in a you know, regular paper shredder you know, and knock it down to chunks, or you can, you know, jump onto the big bandwagon and, uh, you know, build a pellet extruder, um, and just, you know, use pellets. Um, my only question with that, and I'm all for recycling PLA and stuff like that. I've got a bunch of it around, ready to go. Um, is I wonder if the shear strength and the crush strength is different because it is once used, once heated. Um, so it's thermocycled um, uh, yeah. um, plastics. It has actually be twice thermocycled or three times. I was gonna say I think that I think that yeah several times and I think that they they distinctly say, say have a disclaimer as well. I'm pretty sure about about the filament that um, you, I mean you need you you shouldn't believe that it's exactly what you sent in right because it's definitely a conglomeration of whatever you sent in. So, you know, one of these days we may order a, a yeah. thing of recycled filament and do a, a tensile strength test to it and kind of see if it live and buy a, you know, just a regular basic, you know, Amazon special uh, filament roll or something like that. Print the same exact print out of it and see what happens. Because the I think the shear strength, the crush strength and the tensile strength on it would be kind of interesting to see if the you know, thermocycling of building and shredding the pellets and bringing them back together actually makes a difference or not. Because I think some people are, aren't buying or going for the, um, uh, the recycled material because they don't see it as having a high enough tensile strength attached to it. Okay. Now that makes sense. Now I mean... we did see one that was pretty cool though. When we're talking about recycled filament, is the one that was made out of fishing nets. Uh, what is this? Fishy filaments, I think it was. Yeah, yep. that was them. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool idea. I mean, honestly, it's it's hey, we have we have a great um, we have a use for um uh, some of this material you're throwing away. So another man's trash is another is someone else's treasure, right? Or another man's treasure. Yeah, mm -hmm. why why not? So if if they're not going to use it anymore, if it's at end of life, um fishing nets or anything like that yeah why not i mean we reuse it again anyways right yeah that would not be considered or, a i mean we throw it away though. anyways right yeah i think that i think that don't they have a few versions um oh, actually the fishy filaments is its own and then they have some yep. other types some nylons and and things like that but i would say those are more advanced more industrial um filaments that you, i mean the 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 standard user is not going to really know much about um or really need to use but still yeah. yeah i mean things that you should know you you should like we'll talk about it more in the in the in the next couple uh episodes when you go to advanced filaments or maybe even when we after we talk about resins and things like that where we kind of go into depth about um some of the plastics around you some of the plastics that you know are industrial made mass produced things like that um because on a certain level, they're more durable and bigger machines can make them faster, situations like that. Whereas your basic printer in your home, it, I mean, I would be surprised if you said I'm going to print in, you know, polycarbonate at the house. 
Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of questions I'd have if you um if you were doing that first. So um, yeah, if you could do it, that's that's also a, like crazy. So I mean, I'd have more questions on how you did it. So um, I'd, yeah, I'd uh, be questioning the size of the printer that you bought. Exactly, it's like or the type of printer you bought. <laughs> You know, if you're if you're coming if you're walking around with you know you know buying ten thousand dollar industrial printers, you know then yeah if you're your first printer that you know this is not fair, um, you know some of us are you know kind of jelly, um, you know there are some printers that are able to do it capable right out of the box, but you know it, not one of those things that's uh, highly recommended, and also the one good thing about basic filaments is you don't have to have an enclosure for them. Yeah, see, and I think that's a big piece because, like, we try. I, I, for me, when I say I go to an intermediate or an advanced filament, it's it becomes um, your enclosure. It's so hydroscopic, or, or it, it needs it. It sucks all of your moisture out of your all your humidity into the print, and it's going to start causing some issues. Um, I think that that's a majority of my problem whenever I have artifacting or, or stringage issues on my prints. Of course, it could be a temperature change, but most of the time it's the humidity in the air. So, so yeah, you got to be careful about a lot of those things. Uh, I mean, it's it's something that like if your filament's been sitting out for a while, yeah, you should you should probably dry it a bit. But if you're in a constant use, you just took it out of its packaging, you're gonna have great great um, you know results. So. Um, you just got to be wary of where you're getting, where you're getting it and how long it's been sitting. I mean, we talked about it. I think we were talking before the podcast about, you know, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol sitting too long. It's the same thing for filament. If it sits too long in a place that has any type of moisture and you try to print it, it's not going to work like you want it to later. So, yeah, the only um, difference is, is isopropyl alcohol terms of proxis and proxis explodes. Yeah, You don't have to worry about the filament exploding on you like that, at least. Yeah, yeah, you uh, less less explosive, less reactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little bit safer in that sense. But yeah, man, I think that that would be like even PLA plus. It, you're gonna need a new film or a new nozzle. So I would say that's more intermediate for for like uh uh we we any of the filaments we would step into uh, after that. I would say become more prosumer, more industrial, more mm -hmm. um you know. Like PEI uh, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, peak and stuff like that. Oof. Like uh, we were just talking about make your PEI spring steel bed is a PEI coating on it. Like right, and then you talk about printing in PEI. Yeah, that's absolutely outrageous. So like yeah, there's a lot of steps that we got to take to get to that point. It's like a self looking lollipop. You just can like reprint the print bed. Yeah, right. Like fix your bed. Like <laughs> fill back in. Why do you think I saved the beds? <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> I'll be able to fix it. <laughs> Scrape it down, throw it in a fill extruder, and freaking next thing you know, you're making PEI. Yeah. There you go, man. I'm just saying. Like, but I, I know it's probably much more of an in-depth process than that, of course. But, but that's something that, like, uh, you know, you're wary of. So. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that would be covered more in advanced filaments and probably um uh, experimental, I should say, filaments because, um, some of the so there there gets into the realm of uh, what is it um. Conduct, conductive filaments mm -hmm. uh, and, re, and and filaments like uh, that you can create like electrical circuit, circuits with. So yeah, reactive is, is one. So like these are things that you can kind of do. You can probably magnetize it with enough, you know, uh, ferro ferro you know fluids or, or ferro solids depending on what mixture you put in with the filament. So like there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of touch in is, is after you make sure you've got your basics down, your PLA, your pet G, your ABS, yeah. and make sure, sure you're getting used to with that. woods and, you know, things that rust. And, um, I think one person made a, when I was made out of meat at one point. Yeah. Um, I think, um, that was, it was pretty nasty. I, I think, uh, pre the 3d print general, I think was the guy who, uh, him or Nero, I can't remember who made, who it, he said it spelled like, uh, uh, what was it? Beef jerky the whole time they were. Yeah, that was the uh, 3D like print general. Steak. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time they were printing it. He so, tried yeah. every single filament they make. If y'all go back and watch through that series, you'll see some pretty funny things. I'm, I'm telling you, stuff that you know we haven't tried yet. That there's a good chance we probably won't. Um, there's just not, so much that to do. Not that we're <laughs> you know scared to try it. We think it'd be hilarious if something like failed miserably. Um, but it's just the fact to try and get your hands on it. And some of this stuff is so expensive that Jesus Christ. 
yeah. um you know it's like the one that's you know you talk about you know film is out there that are iron oxide and you coat it with a you hit it with a thing of you know isopropyl alcohol and it, and it rusts and pretty much turns into a boat anchor um yeah. there's so much iron in it or the fact that you can take some of these prints and your advanced prints and melt them down and turn them into actual metal working pieces and parts yeah that's the thing i mean honestly uh, some of the military stuff gets to that that realm where it's um you know the metal printing i mean that's mm -hmm. something that you want to get to so i would say that's more specialized um i mean but i also we could probably even do industrial printing so yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy how many applications how many different types and and yeah again for those i cannot stress enough msds if you're not looking at it you're probably going to have some type of chemical reaction go south in your face so yeah and so make sure you're not allergic to any of it you know, yeah, check your family, <laughs> you know, keep them, keep kids away from it. Um, not really, you know, they don't have to be all the way from it, you know, for say, just make sure they're not allergic to anything. Um, you know, last thing we need is my Gavin allergic reaction to, to, you know, the, the glycol or the acid that's in the PLA. Right. So, exactly. you know, and the thing is, is, you know, just keep the family safe, have some fun with it, you know, build what you want, you know, expand the hobby yeah. a little bit. Yeah, we don't we don't say these things to try to scare you away, right? I mean, we just want to make sure you're aware. We want to make sure that you're safe. We want to make sure that you ha are successful, right? So we're we're just trying to give tips and kind of lessons that we've experienced as well. So I mean, I think a lot of this you take it with a grain of salt. I think that you should learn yourself, right? Like, tr give it a try. Like the best way to learn is by doing. Um, get after it and then you tell us if you have success if you have a problem then you ask us i mean we probably had it before right so yeah or been around it when something went you know crazily south you know one of the two yeah most of the bags that i have saved are failed prints that were congealed or, or like all stuck around the hot end and i had to cut them out with like a, a soldering iron or like i would heat my exacto knife with the, the heat gun to cut it off of there so <laughs> there's been many a failure i tell you what <laughs> mm -hmm. so, uh, learned from us but yeah, yeah i think um i think that you know most of the things that i worry about is is with how long it lasts so like if you can deal with that then yeah yeah and, you know, I think I, I, I really think that, you know, we're getting to the point now where people are thinking about it more and more and people are getting involved in it more and more um, and more eyes on the problem. The faster we're going to get a solution. Um, and the more times we get people who are jumping in and being advocates, you know, of the process and of, the, of 3D printing and of additive manufacturing as a whole, um, you know, better off we are. You know, you got some companies out there who are just 100% advocates. You know, that's all they are. You know, they're, they they do what they got to do and they're advocates. You know, they're kind of like what we do, you know, kind of like us. You know, advocates of the process, you know, you're trying to help people learn, you know, get people involved, have a little bit of fun with it. Right. But, you know, they're helping, you know, push the, the topic a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, that is going to be a game changer in the next Oh yeah, say six to eight months. Yeah, I'd be surprised if somebody is not use, like everybody. Every single person I ask is 3D printing has used has used PET PLA at least once. Yeah. So I think that everybody is probably used PET G as well. I mean, uh, but not everybody's probably gotten ABS or pushed past that point. So I think that once we get to those points, you know, you're really edging out into um, your makerspace. You're you know you're probably making something. Yeah, you're having fun with it. Yeah, so that's that's what we want. Yeah, and you know, I think, um, I think from my side, I think that's that that would do it for, for this I, one. Yeah, so for basics, yes. Every single for time basics. I think about something I want to bring up, <laughs> it ends up becoming something more advanced, right? Yeah. Like you're gonna have to like for for TPU for instance, TPU oh, is God. something that I tried before I tried ABS. It was a terrible idea because I didn't have a dual gear uh, or a metal extruder, so I had issues with that. So like I think I think we can probably have a few things where we step into it because TPU is like rigid or not rigid, but 
flexible and you know has a lot of friction you can you probably use it for coasters or like uh end stops or things like that so i mean these are things that i would say is not easy to start with though yeah but it's got the 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 flexibility of printing it like a wet noodle yeah it's hard it's hard (laughs) doesn't Um, like to print that goes into our conversation last week we talked about extruders and you know that you need to do your extruder to print the wet noodle yeah, you, you know, it's printing spaghetti, literally. Um, and some of it's even worse because it's the very flimsy stuff. So, but, yeah. you know, I think before we, before we get into that tangent, um, and the more, you know, I guess you'd say the middle of the road filaments, um, you know, I just, we, we're going to go ahead and, you know, call it here. Um and, you know, I just want to say thank you um, to everybody listening, everybody that has gotten involved. Um, you know, go take a look at us over there on Printed Heritage. We got some new stuff set up over there. We're going to start doing flag prints. I think the next one, I got to think about what country we're going to do next. I think we might do Argentina. Should do the Philippines. Yeah, we'll do the Philippines. <laughs> I know, not I that somebody's biased, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little biased. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's. The thing, it's we're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna keep releasing, yeah, um, uh, you know, flag prints for everybody, you know, that that want them and stuff like that. You know, get people involved, and, um, and you know, we'll go from there. Um, but you know, we're at eight, we're a little over, we're eighteen ninety eight all time downloads. We've almost hit that magical two K mark. Um, wow. And that's what an eighty. This will be a full episode eighty four. So, you know, we've done, uh, you know, almost 100 or so episodes, I think, total. Um, wow. So, you know, we're definitely doing well. And, but the thing is, is, I want to say thank you to everybody who's listening. You know, I'm looking at, you know, all the statistics and stuff like that and, you know, the locations everybody's at. And, you know, it's areas where I've never been to, but, hey, you know, we might have to give it a shot. Um, yeah, but- you know, we yeah it definitely would be you know i want to say thank you um you know y'all mean the world to us doing this we wouldn't be doing this and taking our time out of our nights to to record this if it wasn't for y'all um you know send us some questions you know get involved see us over there on on x on um instagram facebook everywhere um hit us up let us know what you think send us an email um you know info at vulcanari.com or podcast at vulcanari.com and you know let us know what you think give us some ideas you know, we'll definitely take a look at them, definitely think about them, and definitely run with them. So, you know, I'm good from my side. Uh, over to you. Yeah, you know, so I always echo kind of what you're saying. I'm very appreciative. Uh, I, I, you know, don't don't really have the. I mean, there's we everybody has social media platforms, but like I can only say this to my friends and family so many times before they tell me to shut up. So <laughs> it's it's something that's you know it's like we're passionate about. So we we are appreciative if you even listen to us. So and sometimes we kind of spout off nonsense, but as long as if you've been bearing with us, you know, uh, honestly, you're the reason why we do this. So. Um, you know, like he said, you know, check out that website, uh, the, the flag prints, maybe we do too. I'll do the Philippines. So I don't feel like I'm taken away <laughs> f- from anybody else, of course. So, but, but we'll, we'll do something. Um, so yeah, send us some things. If you, if you've got any ideas, if you got any questions, if you, you know, if you're, you're curious about anything we're doing, maybe you had an issue, let us know what you had and maybe it's something we've never seen before. Maybe we can help you. So, um, but yeah. Uh, reach out, uh, stay tuned for, you know, everything else we got coming through and check out that website. So. All right, y'all. Have a good one. All Thanks, right. guys. That's all for this episode of Tech at Lunch. Thanks for tuning in and joining us for this tech-filled lunch break. We hope you enjoy the show, and don't forget to subscribe on all channels. And also, you can find us on YouTube under Vulcan Art Technology Solutions. And join us for our next episode, which gets published every Wednesday at 8 a.m. All right, y'all. Have a good one. See you later.